We're developing a multiplayer card game that's centered around stock investing and economic strategies. If you're into this kind of game, definitely subscribe to our channel. Hey guys, today we're going to dive into the game mechanics we've been cooking up. So, we started brainstorming for Capital Clash. Our big idea was simple, make players feel like they're real investors. Real life investing? It's tough and stressful. There's a lot to think about, company dynamics, markets, competition, and more. Our goal? Create a game that's all about key investing elements, but we wanted to skip the boring stuff. We aimed for a mix that's fun yet complex, something challenging and realistic, but also easy to dive into. Here's our first big idea, players choose to invest in a company or not. Playing a card? That's your investment. You spend cash on a card hoping for future gains and risks. Ditching a card? That's like selling off for immediate cash, but no future rewards. You draw two more cards from your deck each turn. And each turn, you've got two cards to play with. You can either throw both on the table, sell both, or mix it up, one on the table, one sold. It's totally up to you. Second big thing, each game turn mimics an economic cycle. Stocks change with the economy, some are sensitive, others less so. We use this to add a bit of market-like randomness without making the game feel unfair or too chaotic. The toughest part, by far, figuring out the card properties. In the end of the day, what makes a card a good or bad investment? We looked for a middle ground between super simple and really complex games. Think Marvel Snap with its simple cost and attack points, and then think of Magic the Gathering with its complex card effect. We placed Capital Clash in the middle, but closer to Marvel Snap's simplicity. Every card in Capital Clash has a cost, like in Marvel Snap, but we added different properties, not just attack points. We based these on main industry sectors like financial services, infotech, consumer staples, and more. We created properties reflecting these sectors' key traits. This makes our cards varied and easy to learn, and this way, the game ties more closely to the real world of investing. Alright, let's break down what these cards can do. Roughly, these props fall into three categories, income generating, support, and attack effects. First step, income generating properties, starting with steady income. This bad boy gets you a fixed amount of Venn dollars every turn, no matter what's happening in the market or the economy. Consumer income is all about making money based on the market size when the turn wraps up. Interest income links your income to how many Venn dollars you've got stashed at the end of each turn and it swings with the economic cycle. With capital goods, your card earns a set income at the end of booming economic cycles. Before we continue, remember to follow us on social media and thank you very much for your support on YouTube. Now let's continue. Support effects. The Tech Boom feature is all about stacking resources based on the economic cycle each turn and then paying out big time at the game's end. Industrial Impulse is super cool. It powers up your capital goods cards in your portfolio, making them earn even during regular economic cycles. Cheap Resources cuts down the cost of your next card. Health Services boosts your consumer market size until the game's over, giving a leg up to all features that depend on market size. Public Utilities is pretty much like Health Services, but hangs out in the utilities sector. Capital Markets is a slick passive feature in the financial sector. Drop it in your portfolio and you get an extra sell action that turn. But remember, you've got to have a card to sell, or it's a no-go. Land Development lets you boot another card from your portfolio, freeing up space and getting back a part of the cost of the booted card. When you play the Ad Revenue card in your game portfolio, you need to pick a card from your opponent's portfolio. The card you select will then earn a certain percentage of the revenue generated by the steady income, consumer income, and capital goods attributes of that particular card. Okay, last break before we're done. Remember, the beta will start soon. Stay tuned. Attack effects. Exclusive supplier jacks up the cost of the next end cards your rival adds to their portfolio. Deindustrialization is all about bringing the pain to your opponent's capital goods cards, cutting down their income by X percent for end turns. Competition shrinks your rival's market size for all card effects by X% percent for end turns. With bank financing, your card's gonna make your opponent lose a chunk of their Venn dollars at the end of each turn for end turns. Industry Pioneer targets your opponent's tech boom cards, swiping their stacked resources by X Venn dollars for end turns. When you add the marketing cost card to your portfolio, you again choose a card from your opponent's portfolio. This time, the selected card will lose a certain percentage of its income from the steady income, consumer income, and capital goods for a set number of turns. If you've got a medical center card, it's going to shrink your rival's consumer market size by X% percent for end turns, messing with all the features that rely on market size. Finally, new zoning just wipes a random card from your rival's portfolio, no payback. Phew, that was a mouthful, huh? But now you've got the lowdown on the mechanics and what these cards are all about. That's what we wanted to share in this vid. Stick around, cause next time we're diving into how we bring these cards to life in the game, the 3D models, and all that jazz. 
Don't forget to subscribe, drop a like, hit the bell, and catch you on the flip side.